Hey everyone and welcome back to Remember This Tech. In today's episode we're going to be revisiting the 2008 iMac. It's the 20 inch model that I got from one of my haul videos and we're going to be upgrading it today. We're going to be doing a RAM upgrade up to 4 gig of RAM from the 2 gig it came with. Uh, we're going to put in an SSD. That alone should improve performance dramatically. We're going to not, not install Mac OS X we're going to install a modern Linux Mint operating system. It's fairly robust and lightweight, feature full, and we're gonna see if we can get that on there. The video quality is not gonna be as great. I can't use my capture device on this Mac because it has a special output, video out, micro something, and I don't have that at that output. So we're gonna be using the camera to capture the video. So just a note, but it's still gonna be feature filled and fun. This 2008 Mac came with a 45 nanometer CPU, a Core 2 Duo running at 2.66 gigahertz, and it has a 6 meg L2 cache. This meant that it ran cooler than the 2007 model that I had in the previous video, which ran at 2.8 gigahertz, and it has more L2 cache. So overall, it should have a little bit of a performance edge. It has the ATI Radeon 2600 Pro in here with 256 meg of RAM. We'll just clean it up, open it up, and go from there. And maybe see what we can do for web browsing, uh, maybe YouTube, and maybe play a couple games. So without further ado, let's get right to it. Come on, let's go! Back to the old suction cut trick, and and then you pop the top off. Put it aside where it won't get scratched up. You'll need to put it back on and clean it later. And then go ahead and take out your perspective screws like I showed you in the other video. Be careful of the connectors, especially the camera up top. And then you can proceed to lift this off and insert your SSD. Good time when you put this back on together is to clean this part here too. Let's get to it. All the screws are out. Make sure you leave them in the area where you know where they go so you can put them back where they're in the right areas because they're, they have lengths that are special for each section. So don't mess them up. When you take the front bezel off, there is a bunch of cables here. One of them is the microphone cable. So don't screw this up, but gotta disconnect it. This thing is dusty. Let's clean it up. Wow. Wow, look at that. Oh my gosh. Good thing to do when you're in here is to pull out this battery and replace it if you're gonna you intend to use this for a while because these are cheap, like, you know, 50 cents. So do it. This little connector for the LCD is a six Torx bit and don't lose these little tiny screws and the rest are eight, an eight bit. Just as an FYI reminder. All right, and then gently remove this prior to lifting up the screen. And I know I said I wasn't gonna do a tutorial on the full disassembly. And I'm not, but and normally when you lift this up, you'll have some connectors. This 2008 model has two cables here, which you have to disconnect. Luckily, they're, well, I don't know if they're color-coded, because if they're not, then you should mark them. But down in here, there's two connectors you have to remove, and then there's two more connectors over here to lift this up to get to the hard drive. And then there's more connectors over here that run down here and over here. And they divert into a bunch of different connectors. So yeah, um, mark your cables before you disconnect them, which I'm gonna do some masking tape. So I thought it'd be easy because, oh, it's gotta be the same as the other one. It's not. Apple, if it does anything um, the same on anything, um, don't ever count on that, because it's just never gonna happen. They do whatever. All right, those are marked off. And, okay, we're gonna have to peel the tape down on this. When you're in here, clean out your fans, and if you really wanna tackle it, get down in here, 
pull out the motherboard and re-thermal paste your CPU, but hey, that's a lot more than people can manage because there's 100 cables, 100 connections, everything could go wrong, so don't do that if you don't feel comfortable. Again, don't touch the circuit board over here. Under here is the power supply. If it retains a capacitance for uh, electricity, you can get shocked. Don't touch that. Don't do this. This is a disclaimer. Do it at your own risk. I'm going to pull this out. Hard drive is out. And I just kind of leverage it and then popped it out of the connectors. It's manufactured 2008, 320 gig, putting in this 120 gig, but we're running Linux. So hopefully overall it should run faster. Let's do this. Like I said before, SSDs love tape, especially white duct tape. Doesn't matter. There are no vibrations. They're not going anywhere. Tape it down good. Call it a day. Make sure everything's flush. Reconnect this monitor connector. Connected the cables I marked inside here. Don't forget to connect this little camera uh, connector. Line up the camera. As the screws are gonna go through there to hold it in place. And then do your screws for the monitor and tighten everything down. Hope everything works. You probably could go as far as just to hook up just the necessary LCD screen screws and then turn it on and make sure it recognizes your hard drive before you put everything back together. That's just something maybe you should do. Huh, just a hint. So I haven't fully put in all the screws. I just put the metal bezel on. I plugged in the keyboard and mouse. I'm about to plug in the power. If you're using a Windows keyboard, you're gonna to have to hold down the Alt key we're going to hold on the Windows key, the Alt key, and then P and R at the same time. Let's see if it works and recognizes our hard drive. Otherwise, we're going to crack it back open again. P, R. Well, that's a good sign that it came on, right? So here's the super drive moving. That was NVRAM clear. I got the uh, Linux Mint Mate version, and I'm gonna try to boot from this. In order to do that, when we go to boot up, hold down the option key until it comes up with the boot menu. Keep holding it down till you get the screen where we have Linux Mint installer. Now it depends on the model, this, the firmware, the EFI firmware you have, 64-bit, uh, 32-bit, but this is Linux Mint 21.2 Cinnamon Edition. And this should go, but let, let's try it. Let's just try it. Let's go with this, because this is exciting, and this is gonna be awesome. If you've used Linux Mint before, it's pretty easy, straightforward. Oh, 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 look at, I just let it sit for a while. Oh, Linux Mint sign showing up. Does that mean it's going to work? Because that means it's got issues. Oh, what's going away? What's going on? I wish I knew what was happening. Oh, there's a cursor. Oh, here's the live, live desktop. So from here, I guess I had to load it. And so from here, you want to install Linux Mint. And then we can go from there. And you know I don't have a capture because these old Macs use the mini DVIs and I don't have it, so. Bear with me. So we're gonna go through the install and the setup, and uh, if you've seen Linux Mint or Linux Mint Mate, it's straightforward. Just follow the instructions and continue and continue and go through there. Choose your keyboard, and if it sees the hard drive, well, <laughs> that's where we're gonna cross our fingers, and, uh, and once it shows the hard drive and start installing, I won't bore you with the rest. There's the hard drive. Let's see, erase it. I want to erase everything. All right, now we're off to the races. Yes. And we shall let it install and uh, come back once it shuts off and then we'll put everything back together so we don't have this hodgepodge case. If you look, you know, so 
be right back. This is awesome. Well, this is almost done doing its install for Linux Mint. When you are trying to decide whether or not you want to, or you can install or can't install a newer Linux distro on these, you have to figure out whether it has the 32-bit or the 64-bit EFI that's where your research comes in in finding that out. And also, if your processor is a core and not a core two duo, those typically didn't have 64-bit instructions on the CPU anyways, so you're limited to 32-bit OS. If that's the case, you're gonna be limited to an older distro, which most Linux makers, they're not releasing newer revs of 32-bit OSs. So if you can get the 2008, 2009 model with the 64-bit EFI, and they also the 64-bit Core 2 Duo. It's your best bet, or shoot for a you know a newer gen Intel processor and go from there. So let's uh, let's restart now and make the changes and install Linux Mint, everyone. So I'm gonna try to put in four gig of RAM, double it on the system. I've got a couple sticks, two Hynix, PC2, two gig sticks at 6400, um, which 800 megahertz. We're gonna put it in there because they're very finicky with faster or slower RAM or specific models of RAM. So let's get to it. All right, let's turn it on. I put in a four gig of 6400 memory and uh, one thing to do. See if it recognizes it or if it uh, needs to reset the NVRAM or not, which is entirely possible, which is usually the case usually, but maybe not. Maybe it'll like this RAM. Maybe it'll boot Linux Mint. <laughs> maybe, maybe it'll show me. Yay! Yay! The littlest things excite me when I get something to work. Look at that. Looks pretty crisp and clean and clear. Now we should be running a four gig of RAM, right? And can technically take six, but I don't have a four gig module. What do we have? A 1680 by 1050 native display. I put the front bezel and case back on, tighten everything up. So we're running Linux Mint 21.264 bit. And let's close this out. So there you are, modern operating system on this 2008 model iMac. If you're familiar with uh, Mint, I'll just go over this really quick. And this Linux Mint is kind of the same position as a Windows screen. You have the button down here and you pull up all your accessories, all applications. Here is the system reports. Um, I haven't patched anything. So the update manager currently is showing update and we'll update that in a minute. We're connected wirelessly to volume control brightness and the time is on. So yeah, so archive manager, accessibility, Bluetooth, calendar, pretty much anything you need, date, time, desktop, display, disk usage analyzer. Let's see how much Linux Mint took up out of here. Meh, it took up like, you know, 17-ish, well, 12 gig, less than that. But it can fill up fast if you're gonna put old games or something on here. Drive Manager Effects, Firefox, Web Browser, we've got Firewall, General Stuff, Image Viewer, tons of stuff, tons of stuff. You can fly, you can write to the USB drives, graphics, you get drawing, pics, Firefox is default, you can put other things on there, Office, full LibreOffice Suite, here's your administration, backups, disk tools, Power statistics, how much power or whatever devices are running. And here's your software manager, system monitor. For memory, we got 940 uh, meg used out of four gig, which is pretty efficient. And this system's snappy, believe it or not. Well, probably a lot snappier than the Mac OS X would be. CPUs are hovering around 10%, eh, 19%-ish. Got two cores, and that's it, but 
and then it tells you what's used for the system install. So network, and I'll do this really quick. You know, you've got whatever you need here. Update manager, uh, which I'm gonna do in a second. And then we can test how web browsing is on this 2008 Core 2 Duo iMac. And then we might even try a game or two. YouTube as well. So let's go here to the uh, system security updates, update manager, okay. It's gonna scan for updates and guaranteed there's gonna be some updates. Oh, an update version of the update manager is available, great. So I'll do this and be right back. So let's do a speed test on the connected ethernet on the back of this iMac. Uh, let's see. Hmm. We're not connected to Wi-Fi, so I have to double check. So 183 and 41. So we're gonna install the, the onboard Broadcom wireless drivers for this iMac. We'll test that next. And this is only on the Wi-Fi that's on this old iMac. Mm, you know what? It's not horrible, but you know, that's pretty acceptable, I think. I, I wonder, can, can you watch YouTube on it? Pretty slow loading. But, I mean, it's working. And this is on the internal, so I mean, it's not horrible. All right, let's play this then. Okay, Even buffering, quit, buffering. No matter what I do. I suppose I could zip tie it on. The only other option I have is to put in this dinky little fan for the exhaust. Looks and like we're dropping frames. I want to do, but I can do that. I may go with the zip tie route. So. All right, so it's usable and it's acceptable. One thing I find that's great is that on Linux in certain distributions, you can uninstall Steam. Now this won't be able to play the most latest and greatest titles, but I think we can get by with playing a few things. And Steam supports Linux, Linux Mint. It has a bunch of titles on there that you can uh, work to. Got the Steam FPS counter rolling. Yeah, it's not great. 19, 18, 20 sometimes. We might be able to cap the FPS. And that might do something, but uh, um, VSync, maybe VSync will actually help in this instance. I really don't know. Um, everything's off that can be turned off, and let's just play this. The FPS, uh, it's playable. I'm not gonna lie, it's not great, but it's still playable, I think, so. Eighteen FPS, you're not gonna win any awards there. But you know what? It's, if this is your game on this old system, you can do it. You can play it.
I just fragged those guys, so yeah, whatever. Yeah, this game's playable. I like it. It's working well. So we can play Borderlands 2 at 720p. We can play it at a higher resolution, but it's a little stuttery, so it looks pretty good. So yeah, you can do some moderate gaming on this system. We're gonna try Civilization V for this old iMac. I haven't played this one, but if it's anything like the other ones, it should be fairly fun. Straightforward, I guess, you know? All right, we're gonna try what this is telling us we could do and Here's the settings. I mean, it, I, I might have to lower it, but this is a weird resolution, you know? Um, interface. So it doesn't really let me choose what what I can play or not as far as civilization. Well, it's 15 FPS. It's not really that great because, I mean, do you need faster than 14, 12 FPS for this game? Maybe not, I mean. I don't really think you need like a super fast machine to play these games, but the turns is what's going to take the time, you know? So, like the faster your CPUs or something, faster the turns will go from the other computers. Anyways, that's another game you can play here. Yeah, they're older games are around 2012, 2013, 14, but you know what? Hey, this computer isn't made for, you know, modern games, but there's plenty of things you can do and play, so this is one of them. Trying to launch Enemy Unknown. There we go. Launching. So there's two, and you can pick which one because I own both. So we got XCOM here. XCOM and basically we're at 1024 by 768 VSync enabled and uh, I'll leave it there. And we're gonna try, I say try to load the game where we were before. Got the FPS counter up here, built in with Steam. And this is a Steam game, just to remind you. Not the greatest, but it's turn-based, so I think you might be able to play. Hello, Commander. My name is Dr. Farnan. I oversee the research labs. This... I always gotta research stuff. No, so far so good, I mean, but the problem with this game is that you literally got to save all the time and watch what you're doing and if you guys die in the beginning or something or when you've leveled them up, they're useless at this time, you know? The FPS is pretty abysmal, but turn-based, you know, so it's not gonna, well, I mean, I don't know. Not great, but I think you can play it if that's if that's your only option. That's what I'm saying. And it can't go any lower for the uh, resolution, so. But, I mean, 
I think it's playable, so do whatever you gotta do. Right? That's what it was back in the day. You play the game. If you could get it to play, then great. You're good. I think this is gonna take a lot to play, but. Great. Great. What the hell was that? See, I'm tempted to blow them up with a grenade because they're right there on the car and they're like, don't blow them up. But honestly, it's tough. Because in the beginning you have zero weapons. Huh. Did not die. Imagine that. Wow, there's like four of them there. Come on! Come on! I actually hit something. Didn't kill anything, but uh, yeah. Oh, 35%. Wow. Wow. Talk about horrible. You're okay. So if you don't heal them before you go back to base and have issues, then they'll take a long time to recover. So, or they could die right on the spot, bleed out. So this game is totally playable. So, my final thoughts on this iMac 20 inch 2008 model restoration. Well, it technically wasn't a restoration, but rather it was a reinvigoration of the iMac. How do I, how, what do I mean by that? Well, the SSD upgrade, doubling the RAM, installing a new modern Linux operating system. Basically, it brought it up to today's security standards gave you more functionality in that you got free software, you can play some of your Steam games, um, older ones at that, at that, you can browse the web, fine. So what we did essentially is breathe new life into this old piece of hardware instead of throwing it away, which it runs great and there's no reason to throw it away. So I always advocate for repurposing breathing new life into older hardware. Things to note, as long as you keep your expectation low as far as the games from Steam, you're fine. You can play a bunch of turn-based games and even Borderlands 2, which was released in 2012, pretty good. Lower resolutions, of course. So with that said, if you wanna do this, it shouldn't be too hard, just to be careful when you crack open the uh, iMac so you don't pull out any of the small, tiny cables because if you go to put back the screen or anything else, connectors power, it might not work. And also beware of the power supply is not covered like a normal one. So be careful, do this at your own risk. Thanks for coming along with me on this video today and, and thanks for watching. Remember this tech.